So Dr. Chirag will be presenting a shoulder instability case. Good afternoon, one and all. And uh, I would like to thank the organizers for giving us this platform. Uh, I'll be speaking on the Gagel lesions. Now, it's a new addition to the family of uh, avulsion injuries of the glenohumeral ligament. We all know about the Bagel, Hegel, and now the Gagel. Uh, there's not been much literature, either underreported or underdiagnosed, maybe the reason for this. We did have a, a few cases in the last uh, few months, which I would uh, probably present. Now, uh, what, is, what exactly is a Gagel? It's nothing else but a, whether uh, there's an evolution of the inferior glenohumeral ligament and the labrum is attached firmly to the glenoid. Now let's me, uh, let me just get a quick uh, a response from the crowd. What is the incidence of or a percentage of uh, Gagel you see uh, in, your, uh, in our anterior instabilities, that's the Bankart lesions? Is it, is it 20 more than 20 percent, 10 to 20 percent, less than 10 percent or have you not seen any? The, the ARS patch, please. Huh? Okay, so it's, it's rare because even in the literature we have only one series of three cases and then we have case reports, about three or four case reports of this, this kind of lesions. Uh, we did have, uh, out of our, uh, we, okay, it's, uh, it's mostly less than 10% less than is, is the response. One, two, three, oh yeah, Neil. So uh, we did uh, quickly uh, see our uh, data here from May 2021 Chirag, to November 2022. Yes, sir. Can you just adjust your microphone? Here? Yeah. From May 2021 to November 2022, we had about 98 anterior instabilities which we operated. Out of them, 18% were uh, atypical bank card lesions, 19 of them. Uh, most commonly being the Alpsa lesion, then the bo bony bank cards. We did have one Hegel and we did have three Hegels. Maybe just a crop which came up there in that, uh, during that time. And that accounts to about 2.9%. That's about uh, almost 3%. And I have never diagnosed one before this uh, timeline or after that I have not seen. And these three cases did come up in a, in a matter of uh, uh, two or three months. Uh, most of them were young guys, active guys, all of them male, and the uh, modality of injury was usually high velocity trauma, and they did present to us early. It was, it was about three weeks, two of them did present to us, and uh, one presented at five weeks. They're all done their MRIs outside, and uh, they came, came in for a second opinion or for a surgery. Uh, they were all primary dislocators in the sense the first dislocation, all the three of them, and one of them did have a bony lesion, a hill sacs lesion, but none of them had, of course, they cannot have a, a glenoid defect there. Now, what would be the definitive diagnosis of a Gagel lesion? Is it only an MRI, or do we need an MR arthrogram or an arthroscopy? Can I just have a response from the crowd? Yeah, can we see the yeah. response? Uh, one, two, three. Arthroscopy. Uh, definitely. What does literature say? Okay, let me just look into the uh, uh, images first. This was the first case where we did. I did an MRI. Yeah, that's what we are probably going to look into here. So MRI, this was the MRI pictures. I just gave an option like what would be uh, there. So th we didn't do anything more than an MRI here. So uh, there was a suspicion here on the, on the coronal section. As you see here, there's a small split there below the uh, uh, glenoid. And we did have a firm labrum attached here and there was something evulsed. There, that, that did get us into a suspicion. Of course, this was a retrospect for me. Uh, I went inside and then looked at the films uh, properly. I didn't, I didn't uh, suspect a giggle at this point. It was a retrospective uh, uh, diagnosis for me. The second one, of course, now we had learned from our uh, previous mistakes. Of course, the coronal section, I didn't identify anything here. But on an actual section, we had a very nice uh, kind of an avulsion with the, with the glenoid rim attached well here. Uh, also, we did have a lot of fluid seepage into the, into the capsule, so that did say that there was something anterior capsule labral um, tissues were detached. This was the third case. I do not have a running image here. Uh, it was very clear here. There was an avulsion of our, uh, uh, of our IGHL. 
on both the sections and of course the fluoride fluid speed seeped into the anterior chamber um, we did we did go and uh, analyze ourselves was it was it only the mri which was required here or did we needed to do any uh, MR arthrogram, we felt it was not required, so we did not get uh, any one of them and sometimes do, one, of them, one of the papers did say that it is probably uh, not a very good idea to get a MR arthrogram. Now, how many of us would conserve this lesion? If, 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 uh, can I ask the panel if, if this was a first time dislocator, young guy coming to us and we had a giggle lesion here, uh, do we consider or treat it like a bank cards? or do we have another plan of action for this? Anybody? So it looks as if I think uh, with the labrum still being intact, I think I would give him a trial at a conservative management. Okay, you would, you would give it a conservative treatment, okay. Chira, can I just uh, take a minute? Yeah. So this is a very important anecdote and very interesting. After my fellowship, my first instability surgery of my career two dislocations, I put in the scope, intact labrum and I never read about it because I think the Eugene Wolf article had come just two, three years prior to that. Yeah. In retrospect, I realized it was a gagel. I, I will not tell what I did for it because I think that you need to yeah. show that. But uh, it is the only case that I have ever seen, the first ever of my career, I have never seen after that. We do see capsular rents. Yes. That is common. Uh, we see uh, floating labrums, that is the bank card along with the Hagel lesions, but Gagel like you are going to show is very rare. So having known this now, obviously if I see it on MRI, I am going to do what I did for that case. But you can go ahead with your presentation. Yeah, probably, yeah, first case for me was a retrospect yeah. and yes. Sir. Yeah. Done very well. Right shoulder, she had subluxations, no yeah. dislocation. So he said, we'll tackle that later. Uh -huh. On rehab, she did well. And three years, she carried on. And at her annual follow-up, when she came up, she said, I want surgery for this. I said, but you're doing okay. You have not dislocated. I'm not happy with this. And that's my dominant arm. And then we did imaging. And like retrospect, if you see a hill sacs and you see an intact labrum, then it's either gaggle or a haggle. Okay. So out of, I don't see the... That spot you sp uh, showed there, sometimes it's an MJHL which is there. Yeah. So MJHL will also look very similar like that, which yeah. is uh, thick MJHL before. But you have a, a patellus uh, capsule. So uh, when you see edema and intervention, but this lady is like subluxating since last four or five years. So that, but moment you saw a hill sacs, we realized she has serious instability. She's been given rehab for three years, not happy. And classic gaggle. So one side banker ribbon, other side gaggle. So, techniques of repair, uh, there is no set, uh, we went through the literature there, again we had about three case reports which we came across, three, four of them and uh, there was no clearly defined techniques of repair. Of course, my first, uh, first repair was, I was not prepared for it and let me just see this, this was the first case which I came across and a nice anterior band of the IGHL avulsed. It was a fresh injury so it looked nice, the posteriorly the labrum is good, anteriorly the anterior band of our IGHL nicely well avulsed from the spot. Now what did I do? I, I just freshened up a little bit so my thought process was let it create a little Uh, just there's no uh, no role for rasping and things like that. Uh, second case, again, nice avulsion of the anterior band. We can see uh, the glenoid, uh, the labral 
uh, labrum rim which is ve very well intact it is preserved whereas the IGHL anterior band is evulsed and a good tissue there it's a very juicy tissue since it's a fresh injury uh, it was it was uh, it was uh, tissues were well preserved it was a first dislocation uh, what did I do again here I took a double loaded anchor and uh, since the tissue or uh, the IGHL tissue was floating and it was well detached from the understructures it was fresh injury I it was easy for me to go ahead and repair it with the scorpion the first inferior bite and the second bite through the uh, through the upper part of the IGHL and as I start closing it I have used only two anchors here, one uh, double loaded anchor where I have taken two bites to the IGHL. Once I have completed that job of, uh, of tying the knot, we see that the IGHL is well fallen back to place and then my capsule, capsule labral tissue, another anchor. So only two anchors used here and, and the uh, anterior uh, capsule labral tissues with the IGHL is well fallen in place, taut and good. Now a third case here. It was a little high velocity trauma. He did have a hill sacs lesion also, a huge fresh hill sacs lesion as I, as I entered in. And uh, a good nice giggle lesion see here, seen here. Not only the anterior fibers, but also extending up to about 7 o'clock position. That's the anterior and posterior fibers of the IGHL, which is evolved nicely. The, uh, the uh, labral tissue is well preserved. Uh, fresh injury again. Uh, nice good juicy tissue to repair what I did here is I, I put my first anchor because I also needed to take a bite deep down because the posterior fibers were also involved I used a double loaded anchor at 6 o'clock position took an accessory posterior medial portal and my first bite was, was past 6 o'clock position and uh, uh, the, the tissues it also gives me a little bit of a capsular shift and uh, once I start closing that I had first taken the bite through the posterior fibers and the next bite goes to the anterior fibers of the IGHL and uh, once I finished my two uh, suture approximations we can see that uh, the entire tissue or the entire IGHL is well fallen in place and approximated well. Chirag, uh, two minutes to conclude yes, your talk. Sir, done. So quickly let me just show you the uh, completed repair here. This is, this is, we can see the IGHL nicely falling back in place there and I didn't want to use another anchor, it was not required I feel, so I left it at one anchor repair, of course, uh, probably, uh, I don't know if people would agree to that, I, would anybody uh, use more anchors into that once your IGHL is fallen back, 